This is Photon for Mac OS X. Photon is a graphical, multi-layer, multi-level tool for the creation of particle effects for Objective-C and Swift. You create all particle effects graphically and export the resulting effect in code that you can add to your own applications. Photon comes with a library of pre-created effects and an assortment of images you can use on your own projects. This is a fireball, one of the effects coming with Photon. You can see all effects coming with Photon by clicking here. Comet, Doppler Effect, Explosion, Fire, Fireball, Glittering, Rocket, Snow, Space Cloud, Time Tunnel, White Smoke, and more to be added in the future. How do you create a particle effect using Photon? I will explain that by starting a new project by selecting File, New. To create an effect, you have to have two things, an emitter that in code will be a CA emitter layer and a particle cell known as CA emitter cell. An emitter is a kind of base where you attach the particle cells. An emitter can have any number of particles. Particles can have subparticles, that is particles emitting particles, emitting particles, and so on. This is the layers window. Here you can create layers of particles and emitters, always starting with emitters. Every emitter you create can have one or more particle cells. Photon is the only solution in the market that lets you create multi-levels of particles and emitters. To create an effect, you have to start by creating an emitter. I click this icon that looks like a target, circles inside circles, and this will create a new emitter at the root level of the layers window. I select the emitter, press enter, and rename it to emitter. At this point, I have to add a particle cell to this emitter. Having this emitter selected on the layers window, I click this other icon, like a small sun, to create a new particle emitter attached to this particular emitter. The particle cell is created. I will rename it to particle. Now I have an emitter and a particle cell, but as you see, nothing is happening on the application. This is because the particle has no image and have all properties at zero. We have to add an image to that particle. That image is what will be emitted by the particle cell. To add an image to this particle, I click this arrow up button near the image box and Photon will show me the library of images available. I will select this one called puff.png and this image will now be emitted by the particle cell. Now, to really make the particle cell work, I have to click here and adjust the particle lifetime, that is, the amount in seconds a particle will live. In this case, 12 seconds and also adjust the birth rate, that is, the number of particles that will be emitted per second. You still see no difference because all particles are being emitted from the same place with the same size. We have to change some parameters to see some action, like, for example, the y-axis acceleration. By adding a negative value to this parameter, we now force the particle to fall, but the fall is straight. Let's make more changes. I start by changing the scale speed, that is how much the scale increases or decreases with time. You see that now the particles increase in size as time passes. You can also create some variation to the particle lifetime by changing this lifetime range parameter, meaning that not all particles will live the same amount of time and their lives will assume random values between 12.88 seconds, more or less 3.56 seconds. You can add some spin or angular speed to the particles. You can change all these other values. You can add some color. You can select the emitter and change its render mode to additive. Now you're getting something. You can change the color opacity slightly.
you can also change the alpha speed. You see, you can adjust the values of these boxes by clicking and dragging on the label at its left side. If you hold the Command key while you drag, you can fine-tune and decrease the amount changed. You can change all these parameters on how the color channels variate. Another tweak to the color. You see, the emitter is now emitting all particles from the same point, but you can change that. You can select the emitter on the Layers window. Define a value for the emitter size X and Y, let's say 500 pixels. Decrease the particle size. and change the emitter shape from point to rectangle. Now, instead of being emitted from the same point, the particles are emitted at random from a rectangle with 500 by 500 pixels. This is Photon for Mac OS X, available on the Mac App Store. The possibilities are infinite.